Welcome back. Well, a new 64 page report says the NIH did not properly oversee taxpayer funds to groups tracking coronaviruses. The inspector general saying, quote, we conclude that NIH missed opportunities to more effectively monitor research with improved oversight. NIH may have been able to make more timely corrective actions to mitigate the inherent risks. Member of the House Select Subcommittee on the Coronavirus uh, Crisis, Congressman Ronnie Jackson, joins us now. Congressman, thanks for being here. Specifically, NIH admitting they didn't oversee EcoHealth Alliance, which is a name a lot of our viewers uh, are, are familiar with because of their connection to the Wuhan lab. So we weren't even watching over the, the tax dollars we were sending to this research. Absolutely, Peter. And I think, you know, if you look at it, the NIH budget is $48 billion. And $8 million of that, like you said, went to uh, EcoHealth Alliance. And this is Dr. Peter uh, Daszak uh, and the funding of it, it, it that was going on at the Wuhan Institute of Virology that was leading to some of this uh, dangerous research that was done there. And like you said, the, the inspector general said, had that, you know, been there been the proper oversight, some of that would have been identified much earlier. And maybe this, uh, you know, we wouldn't have ended up where we were at with COVID. But I think that there's a lot of issues going on at NIH. And I think, you know, uh, um, Speaker McCarthy has appointed me to the Select Committee on Coronavirus, and I think one of the things we're going to do, in addition to getting to the origins of COVID, we're going to look at all the stuff that's going on at NIH as well and see where a lot of that money's going, because I think there's been a real lack of oversight in general at NIH. And some of the other stuff that's come up recently that I also want to look at in this process is what's going on with the royalties and the kickbacks that a lot of scientists and employees at NIH are getting uh, with this $48 billion budget that they have complete authority yeah. over. It gives them a lot of power, a lot of authority. Uh, and I think it's a conflict of interest and it's a setup for corruption. And a lot of these people are leaving these jobs insanely wealthy, chief among them, uh, Dr. Fauci, who's worth tens of millions of dollars, but has spent his entire career as, a, as a, an employee of the federal government. I just don't see how that happens. So there's a lot to look at here with NIH, sure NIH is. budget and the oversight and everything else that goes on there. Including the private sector. I mean, Project Veritas had videos mm -hmm. recently of, of uh, folks at Pfizer bragging about doing similar research as well. So there, yeah. there's a lot to be done there. Yeah, and the CEO of a Research and Development there actually admitted that everybody at Pfizer thinks that this was a, a lab leak from the Wuhan yes. Institute of Virology. So, yeah. Yep. So, <laughs> but the NIH had lots of money to oversee <laughs> it, didn't do anything about it. We want to get to another That's topic fair. with you as well, Congressman, because you're <clears throat> reintroducing uh, what is known as the Farm Act which combats foreign entities from buying American farmland. And I want to give our viewers a sense. One country in particular has, you know, hundreds of thousands of acreage in the United States, and it's China. Here's, they have three, 383,935 acres of farmland owned by the Chinese government inside the U.S. How does this happen, and what can you do about it? Yeah, this is uh, the number of acres that have been bought up by uh, foreign entities has gone up exponentially over the last few years. And now there's 40 million acres in the United States, 5 million acres just in the state of Texas worth about $70 billion that's owned by foreign entities. And, you know, this is them controlling our sp supply chain, mainly the Chinese from the inside out. Not to mention, you know, the recent story of North Dakota where they're buying up a lot of farmland near important bases where we do a lot of drone testing, things mm -hmm. of that nature. So this can't happen. So the Farm Act is a standard for Foreign Adversaries Risk Management Act, and it, it takes CFIUS, which is the Committee on Investment, uh, uh, Foreign Investment in the United States, and it, it inserts ag into that process, agricultural uh, land purchase in particular, and treats the purchase of agricultural land as a national security yes. issue. And we, we have to start doing that. We have to start looking at our ag industry as a national security issue, because if we don't, we're going to be in real trouble down the road. Well. China said they're they're conducting uh, you know irregular warfare, which means yeah. any means possible, and food security is a huge part of it. Absolutely. I wish you, wish you success in that legislation, uh, Congressman Ronnie Jackson. Thanks for being here. Thanks, Pete. You got it. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.